first things first, let's clear the gun. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm trying to get the camera right. There you go. Empty chamber. This is trigger. Safe direction, by the way, is over there. This whole basement is surrounded by dirt. Uh, there is no walkout in the basement. So every single place, 360 degrees around me, is a safe area at the moment. Uh, there is a bedroom in here, and my daughter does stay in there, but she is not here. It's safe. So I wanted to kind of discuss some things real quick. This is a Ruger SR9C. Um, and you might see me looking over here because my viewpoint is right there, right here. My camera is right here. I'm, I'm trying a new setup here. So you will see me occasionally looking to the left. I don't want to do that. So let's move the viewer as close as possible to the camera and see if that helps. That does help, but you will see me kind of looking to the left. Let's see how close I can get that camera. I can put it in front of the viewer. That's actually better. There you go. And you see my unfinished pole right there. Um, back on the topic, this is a Ruger SR9C. This is my wife's gun. I'm going to tell you a little story here. She, I bought my gun and I bought several guns and she, was, she began to get interested because I bought a bunch of guns and she is a veteran. She's a 20 year veteran. She a retired master sergeant uh, she's been deployed multiple times one to Iraq so she is a combat veteran um, no she did not sit in foxholes and bust down doors and shit but anytime you deployed over there and that's a combat environment yeah so she is a combat veteran um, so I guess she wanted to exercise her second amendment right and she went and got a gun uh, and she bought this at Cabela's uh, we went there to kind of view so she can put some things in our hands uh, around here Cabela's is the place if you want to see a broad uh, mix of firearms um, we have uh, smaller stores out there but with the smaller stores they have a smaller inventory and she wanted to be able to put something in her hands to kind of feel whether or not she would like it uh, she settled on this and she took it to the range and fired the first shots out of it and did not like it uh, for one even for me this damn thing is very difficult to rack I have other sub subcompacts that are just as small if not smaller than this and for some reason this one has a very very strong recoil spring so it, it is very difficult to rack. Uh, if it's difficult for me to rack, I know for a fact it's difficult for my wife. Uh, for the ladies and the people that don't have strong wrists and arm muscles and you need to rack a gun, a uh, good way to rack is to use your back. And what I do is I teach folks to push this way and grab the gun and also push so with each gun you're pushing the opposite way it's a good way to work it out um, and that kind of forces you to use your back muscles um, you could probably end up focusing on it and actually doing like a crunch that helps a ton uh, so for those of you out there if you don't believe me Google and look at other YouTube videos talking about the subject and you will find that other people are actually teaching that method of racking uh, for folks who maybe are older and have issues uh, uh, racking guns that have strong springs uh, but anyways so she couldn't rack it for one and for two um, she can handle the recoil um, I'm used to shooting subcompacts so I can manage recoil better than she does, uh, but I probably have a more robust bone and 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 musculature uh, than than she does, right? So um, she should have bought the gun 
for her. Now the thing is, it's like we're thinking on it now and she could have went to a range that had rentals and she could have kind of experienced them there. But I guess she didn't think that, I mean, this is a compact. This isn't a subcompact. So, you know, some guns are worse than others. You know, I have a subcompact, uh, the, the grand power that she fired and she, she liked that better than this. They're basically the same size. So, so I think it depends. I think it depends on the gun. Uh, another gun that she liked, uh, she liked firing. I, I took a 1911 there, uh, my 22 TCM uh, mid-sized, and she liked that a lot. Um, and I think we fired a one or two other 1911s. She likes the 1911s. Uh, be, and she, you know, first she complained, saying, "Oh wow, they're heavy." Um, yes they are but you know she found out quickly that you know and I had uh, talked to her and she was like why how come I can fire this gun it's a bigger gun it's a bigger caliber I said it's the weight and uh, you know not not all guns are created equal um, so she found that out so now she has not fired this gun um, this gun probably has less than 50 rounds through it between the both of us I like the gun because it's super accurate. Um, the trigger is like really nice. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is it has controls that get in the way when I rack it. So if we turn it here, I always catch my finger or the meat of my hand on this. And because this is up there, it makes it to where I don't have a lot of grip to work with when racking it. Uh, it's already a strong, you know, spring. So uh, not only that, I have to be careful because I racked it earlier, maybe about an hour ago, and I caught my hand on the rail, the meat of my hand here. So it's probably going to be slightly bruised tomorrow. Um, and like I said, that the spring on this is is massively strong. Uh, and I'm saying that from someone who's been firing guns, uh, handguns a while. Um, I don't believe I have anything stronger than this. I, I can rack my 10 millimeter 1911 better than this, but it's bigger gun. Um, the serrations are, are a little bit better. Um, and I have more to grab onto when I rack the gun. Uh, another calm with this, and I hear a lot of people don't have the problem with the all black, uh, gun because that gun uh, is painted that way so it takes the bite off of these serrations here these serrations are super sharp and in fact uh, they were starting to cut my hands when I went when I took it to the range that time uh, so what I, what I did was I took a fine file and I started filing down those serrations trying to take the edge off um, and that's something else that a lot of people complain about about this gun this particular uh the stainless uh one thing that my wife really liked about the gun and i noticed it's toned down so i i, I guess it's an age issue was when they etched the gun here uh it's, it was supposedly it was it was black well it was supposed to be black right uh, but it's like it burned in too much and it was actually a brown when we bought it and it actually looked pretty nice uh, the etching on both sides uh, instead of black they were brown but that brown is since worn off it's just straight up black now um, looks like a regular gun so a lot of people don't like this this uh, loaded chamber indicator because it's so large and let me see if I can So some of it's off on this side. But if you turn over here and flip it up, see that big ass flag there and it's all red. There's no reason for this thing to be that big. No, but it doesn't bother me because I don't see it when I'm shooting and I don't even I don't even need it because a lot of times when I do my checks, I look, you know, I do my my, you know, checking to see if it's loaded or not you just look down in there I don't care about feeling it um, this is not a night gun that I use um, 
course you can press check it, it's a, it's a good gun um, I could carry this but again it's like there are some challenges that this gun gives me that I don't like again uh, this being too high and I don't I mean I have 1911 so uh, I don't care so much about having a manual safety on a on a handgun in fact with my grand power I don't even use it because it's a double uh, double action single action gun um, this is the only thing that gets in my way what if it was there I wish it was lower uh, other than that racking the slide or whatnot but again you know one of these you know guns like this people talk their wives or their significant others into uh, because it's cute and it can fit in a purse and then when they they take the first shots out of it it stings them so much that they don't like it uh, so I mean my wife could use this to you know maybe she can trade it or maybe she can sell it and use the funds to buy another gun that's on her uh, but again it's a compact it's not, it's not the smallest thing in the world um, it just you know and you would think with that beefy ass uh, recoil spring um, it would help with the recoil and you know it's probably her you know like again I said her her wrists are probably weaker than than other folks otherwise she'd be able to control the recoil and if practice makes perfect right so uh, maybe she went to the range and started using it maybe she'll adapt to it but the thing is, is like as a first shooter you probably want something that you can shoot that you don't have to kind of grow into um, you know part of the fun is going there knowing that you're gonna like shooting not uh, you know kind of dreading that that shock of that recoil and you're having to deal with it for an hour or so you know so I don't know I, I wouldn't say it's money wasted but you know I didn't talk her into this I was there giving her their support that she needed but you know I've told her before I was like just because it's small doesn't mean it's cute and doesn't mean you know everyone always thinks oh a, a woman needs a small purse it has to be pink or some shit like that and uh, I think all of that is, is bullshit um, let 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 that person buy what they want and if it turns out that they're wrong then they're wrong they bought the wrong gun I mean it's, it's their mistake to make uh, but if you don't try it you never know if you're gonna like it or not right but but what we really should have done was we should have hit the ranges and tried out some of their rentals